Hello, my gorgeous friends of Webflow. It's your friendly neighbor and Francesco from Supercyte here. I'm pretty sure about two things. One, Jotaro is the coolest character in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Don't fight me on this. Two, we all know that GSAP can create stunning, staggered, slide and fade-in animations for your Webflow projects. But here's the real question. What if I told you that you can create these animations without writing a single line of code? Yup, you heard it right. At the end of this video, you'll be able to set up your awesome gallery layout in Webflow, add a few attributes, no coding skills needed, to control the vertical offset for the sliding animation, the animation duration for each item, the easing function for individual animations, the total duration for an entire row, the interval between animations of different elements. And that's not all. Need multiple galleries on the same page? Easy peasy. Want the animation to start from the first item, the last one, a random order, done and dusted. So if you're looking forward to it as I am, stick around. And if you're interested in learning more about Webflow or no-code tools, check out our courses on Supercell Academy. Link is in the description down below. And if you find my videos helpful and want to support my work, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. But now, if you're ready, let's dive in. In this page, we have two different layouts. The first one is a bit complex Flexbox layout. The second one is a common grid layout. We want to apply a staggered slide and fading animation to the elements of both these layouts, and we want to do it by wearing the most powerful green sock in the world, GSAP. But hey, not all of us are code experts or are interested in knowing how to code, right? So today, we'll configure a cool staggered animation, ready to be used in your next Webflow project by only using a few attributes. And beware of default values, as you might already be good to go with just a single attribute. All the attributes should be added to a div block wrapping all the items or to a collection list. The first, most important attribute is the fc-gsub-staggered attribute with a value of list. It defines the element the staggered animation will be applied to. It should be added to a div block wrapping all the items or to a collection list. All of the following attributes are options, so optional. You can give the default staggered animation a try, and if you like it, you can completely ignore them. The threshold indicates at what percentage of the target's visibility the animation will be triggered. 0.4 means 40%. The default value is 0.4. Each is the amount of time in seconds between each animation start time. So if each is 0.2, there would be 0.2 seconds between each animation's start time. If you prefer to specify a total amount of time to split up among the staggers, i.e. the items within a row, use the amount property instead. Default value is 0.2. But please note that if the amount has been set, the each property will be ignored, even if it has a valid value. Amount is the total amount of time in seconds that gets split among all the staggers, aka the items within a single row. So if amount is 0.5 and there are five elements that stagger linearly, there would be 0.1 seconds between each animation start time. If you prefer to specify a certain amount of time between each item, use the each property instead. Default value is 0.5. Again, please notice that if the amount has been set, the each property will be ignored, even if it has a valid value. Duration is, guess what, the duration in seconds of the animation of a single item. Default value is 0.5. Because we are basically creating a slide and fade in animation, offset Y is the initial position of each item along the Y axis. Default value is 3 REMs. From is probably the most interesting option. 
It allows us to specify the position within the row of items from which the stagger animation will begin. Possible values are start, center, edges, random, or end, or a zero-based index representing the position of the element within the row. Default value is start. Start, as we might expect, means that we want the stagger animation to start from the first element on the left. But let's try a few of them. Let's say end. If we publish and inspect the live link, we can see that the animation starts from the first element on the right. If we use edges, the first and last elements within a row will be the first elements to be animated. Then the animation will kind of move towards the center. If we write one, the second element from the left will be the first one to be animated. If we want to have a bit of fun, we can try random. Guess what happens? Cool, right? But now, let's move to the last two options. Ease is the easing function applied to the animation of a single item. Default value is power3.out. All possible values are listed in GSAP easing documentation. Finally, we have the staggered ease. This is the easing function that distributes the start times of the animations between the elements of a single row. So, for example, power3.out, because it's kind of a curve that goes up very fast to then quickly slow down, would start with bigger gaps and then get more tightly clustered toward the end. The default value is power1.out. We haven't explicitly pointed that out, but we have already seen multiple times that this solution works flawlessly with more than one list within a single page. More specifically, the first one within this page has only the FC stagger GSAP attribute applied. And as we can see, no additional indexes are required to differentiate between different instances. Oh, by the way, the first list has a somewhat uncommon layout, right? If you're interested in how I built it, let me know in the comments below. I might drop a tutorial on that if you want. Last thing before we move to the next example, at the end of the page, there's a recap of all the attributes that you can use to customize this solution, with also a link to GSAP easing documentation if you want to take a look at it. But now, let's move to the next example. Okay. Probably I shouldn't even mention it, but of course, this solution works with collections lists as well, and does with items coming from the CMS. That, in this case, also contain a lightbox instead of a single image. And we can make it work with custom grid layouts as well. By the way, if you like the layout of this grid, you can find the link to my YouTube tutorial in the description down below. Everything works like a charm, right? And that's it. We saw how, without using code at all, we can ask the most powerful green sock in the world to build a cool staggered animation for our gallery of images or maybe testimonials or the list of all the anime we have watched so far. I got to more than 300. Also, thanks to a bunch of attributes, we can treat the animation based on our needs from the duration of the animation to the easing function and the order of the animations within a single row. Of course, a link to the clonable for this project is available in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more webflow tips and tricks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Matane!